All right, John. No, this John, not that John, this John. John chapter 1. Let's see if I'm getting... The feed must be delayed slightly. I got a text from my wife saying, turn your mic on. <laughs> so in a couple of minutes, she'll say, ha ha, or something like that. Yeah. John chapter 1. I love John. He's always been one of my favorites. Jeremiah is my favorite prophet. Um, you just, you know, everybody's personality is different. You read the Bible and you just pick certain people out of there that you like. And John is somebody I like. I like the way he writes. In the beginning, John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from, jo uh, from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. And if you just look at verse 17 very quickly, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Those two verses go together. I don't know why God separated them by two more verses, but they go together, amen? I'm not questioning God in the least bit. All right, let's go to prayer. Father, we ask your blessings tonight on your word. I thank you, Lord, for these that are here. Father, we certainly pray for Brother Sterling tonight, Lord, that you'd continue to bless him. Thank you, Lord, for letting him come home to be in his home and with his family to uh, eat the food that he likes and drink his coffee as hot as he likes to drink it. And Father, we just pray that you'd bless him and bless Sister Bonnie. And I pray, Lord God, that you would recover her well from uh, this COVID virus. I pray, dear God, that you would just bless, Father, our nation, our nation, needs your intervention. Father, we need your guidance. We know, Father, that nothing in this world is happening without your governance, without your permission, that it fulfills your plan. So, Father, we rejoice, dear God, that your kingdom, your kingdom, Father, is going to come one of these days. Bless your word tonight. Open up our hearts and our eyes and feed us some good things that we need and let us be a blessing to others as we carry them forth from this place. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. I've covered several things uh, in this that um, uh, we're just talking about the opening, the first 14 verses of John's gospel, John chapter 1. Um, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, we've been talking about the word of life. Uh, where, where John here in John 1 says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. First John 1, 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen and with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. Uh, Paul used that same phrase in Philippians chapter 2, verse 15, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God. I'm going to talk about that later. Without rebuke. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. That kind of fits in with what I preached Sunday morning about 
things that are uh, about cheaters and people that lie and things like that. This is a crooked and a very perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Let me just throw this in there. I believe that God calls us to be lights in this world. We don't shine as bright as Jesus does. We would never take away from his glory, amen? But let's say we shine like the stars. When's the best time to see the stars? Daytime, nighttime. Nighttime. When it gets dark, then God's people shine better, amen? Daytime, the stars are still up there. You just can't see them. But when it gets dark, and I'm telling you, it's getting dark out there. One thing that Joe Biden said that I agree with, he said it during the debate, it's going to be a dark winter. Now, I don't know where he got that from, but I agree with him. It's going to be a dark winter. This is the time for God's people to shine more than any other time, I would say, in the history of mankind right now, all right? Holding forth the word of life, there it is, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Uh, Acts 17, I think we did this last week. Look at, look at John chapter 1, verse 4. There was an article that came out a few years ago that when I saw it, I went, that's it. It's my, one of my favorite things. Science always proves the Bible. Oh, unless it's evolutionary science. But it always proves the Bible. Everything that we know now about DNA is... Proof that it must have had someone put it together. Must have had. Let me explain that a little bit. It would be like, J.R., if you took, J.R. was going to write a book. He's going to write a book and it's going to have 800 pages in it. So he takes 800 pieces of paper and a typewriter and sets it out in his backyard and he's going to wait then for the book to write itself because he doesn't want to do it. He's done with school, right? So why would you want to do anymore? So how long, JR, would you wait for that book to write itself? Forever. However, let's examine that for a minute. Why would, it, why would it not last forever? What is it about paper that when you put it outside, what happens? Rain hits it, sun hits it. Okay, the typewriter. What will happen to the typewriter? Y'all know what a typewriter is, right? What would happen to the typewriter? It rust. Rot, decay, after, let's say, 100 years, 200 years, 500 years. And this is the laws of nature that we're dealing with. Things don't get better all by themselves. They rot and decay all by themselves. So when you think about DNA, the book of life that writes the genetic structure of everything that's alive in this world, there's no way that even millions upon millions upon millions of years could write the complexity that exists in DNA. The fact that most living mammals have eyes, but even at that, some of those eyes are designed differently. Where did nature get the idea for having eyes to begin with? They don't make sense the ability to smell, the ability to taste, certain animals' ability to eat things that to us would just be reprehensible. We wouldn't eat it for a million years, but they can eat it. And you start thinking about every single living organism in this world, 
and the fact that all of them, according to evolution, just popped up one day and became living, not only became living, but also started to reproduce itself to make more of itself so that its species would continue. When you start thinking about the mathematic improbability of that happening, you cannot logically say that DNA, as complex as it is, just happened to write itself. Can never, never, never get me to believe that. So, John 1, 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And then it says, um, oh, let's see here, where is that verse? The true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the... Is that verse 9? Yeah, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So, I don't know what gave them the idea, but they were photographing the egg inside of a woman and they noticed that at the exact moment of fertilization a light shined out of that egg they don't know where it came from but there was light notice I've made a point of this if you look in verse 7 and verse 8 and 9, um, the same came for a witness, bear witness of the light, capital L, verse 8, he was not that light, capital L, but he came, was sent to bear witness of that light, capital L, verse 9, that was the true light, capital L, four times, he's referring to the light as Jesus, now go back to Genesis 1, go back to Genesis 1. That light is Jesus. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. And God said, how many words? One, two, three, four. Four words. Let there be light. And there was light. Now, is this, does this mean Jesus was created? No. What it means is what the Bible says about Jesus. He is the word of God. He is the word of God. And what did David say in Psalm 119 about the word of God? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and then you notice uh on day four of creation verse 14 genesis 1 let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the light from the night or the day from the night let them be for sign four things signs seasons days and years you see light not only shines and allows us to see things in this world but the way that god put the lights up in the skies they govern time we use the lights to measure time. We use the position of the sun to measure the day. We use the position of the sun annually to measure a year. We use the position of the moon over 28 and like a quarter days to measure out each month. And we use the stars and their position in the night sky to measure out and to divide up how many of those months are going to be in a year. Everything that God gave us right here in Genesis chapter 1 with the light and then the heavenly luminaries, the sun, moon, and the stars, aid us and guide us and measure things for us and rule, have dominion over this earth. Time rules over us. And with all of us, time's running out. Amen? Time's running out. But anyway, uh, so at the point of every human being every man coming into the world god says let there be light so you know what that makes me think i've always had this theory that everybody in the world doesn't matter who they are when they lived or where they live always had some knowledge of who God is. Number one, it says, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Talking about Jesus Christ and his gospel. 
So I believe that every body who comes into this world who can think for themselves has in some way in their inner being, their soul, their heart, a knowledge of who God is. Am I wrong in that? No, Romans 1 tells us that. Because God says then that they are without excuse. When he judges them, they won't be able to say, well, we didn't know who you were. We had, we had hundreds of gods that we worship, and God says, I know, you traded me in for them. And I believe that somehow, some way, they do it willingly, knowingly, okay? That's just what the Bible says. Now, I was fortunate to have a mother that brought me to church and made sure that I learned the gospel and accepted that gospel. But, and I, so I can't speak for anybody else. I don't know how it works. I just believe that people who are brought into this world, in fact, I'll say it like this. Does everybody in the world know that it's wrong to steal something from somebody else? Yeah. Okay. Does everybody in the world, does every man or woman in the world know that it's wrong to cheat on your spouse? Yeah. Even wicked, adulterous people, they still know it's wrong because they hide it. They try to get by with it without everybody knowing about it. These, this is what Paul was saying. The law was written in their hearts and they are without excuse. They know that it's wrong. Now, uh, back to John chapter 1, verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same, uh, the same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. By the way, we're John's. We're John's. We have been put here in this world to bear witness of the light. What does a witness do in a court of law? If you're called up to sit on a witness stand, what are you, what are you supposed to do up there? What do they swear you to, by the way? Tell the truth, yeah? Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But then it goes on further than that. Only tell what you know. You cannot, in a court of law, get away with saying, well, I just feel that he did it. I have this feeling. I kind of know the guy, and that's something he would have done. You can't say that in court. They don't accept that. I don't care how bad you hate the guy. They don't accept that in court. They only, t they only tell you to tell what you know. Now, that's an important thing. What do you know? What do you know about the gospel? What do you know about Jesus, the light? What do you know about the creation? What do you know about these stories that are in the Old Testament? These doctrines that are in the New Testament? What scriptures do you know that you can tell to somebody else to bear witness of the light? Because Paul said people read us like they would read an epistle, a letter. We are an open book to them and they read us and the only Bible they're ever going to read is going to be out of us. You better make sure it's a King James in your life. Amen. So then he said, um, verse 10, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. And he came unto his own and his own received him not. Who's he talking about here? The Jews. He came into his own, the Israelites came to them. Now, did God know this? Yes. In fact, it was God's plan. Now, what was God's will? God's will for Israel is that they be saved. That's his desire. But what is his plan? His plan was he knew that Israel would reject the gospel when Jesus brought it the first time. But when he brings it the second time, a remnant is going to receive it. His own received him not. Verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. This goes with what I preached a week ago Sunday. The brotherhood. 
where Jesus is the firstborn among many brethren. So we are related to Jesus Christ by birth. Um, look in John 3. John chapter 3. How many years is Jesus going to reign? thousand years. You know John 3 is the thousandth chapter of the Bible? Amen. And you know what the thousandth chapter of the Bible tells you? How you get to be in that kingdom? Look at verse 3. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Thousandth chapter of the Bible tells you how to be in the millennial reign. Amen? Amen? So being born again, Nicodemus didn't understand that. So he asked the question, Verse 4, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, set the man be born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So he has to be regenerated. The old has to be destroyed to give way to the new. There's a picture of... There's pictures of that in nature. Picture your soul as a worm, because I think that's what it is. The Old Testament guy says, I'm a worm and no man. So, a caterpillar. Caterpillars are disgusting, aren't they? Big, nasty, hairy things coming out of them. 15,000 legs on them. It's disgusting. But what do those caterpillars do? They weave, what? They turn to butterflies. They weave a chrysalis. You know what that chrysalis is? It's a grave, it's a casket, it's a tomb. Oh yeah! See, that stuff you're supposed to learn in school, I'm teaching it to you. Really? So the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis, the grave, the tomb, he dies, and then he's born again. Only now he's got wings. Amen? Four of them, by the way. Four of them, just like the ones in Ezekiel chapter 1. Four wings. Okay? That's beautiful, amen? That's being born again. Now you are a... Son of God. And so he says, there in verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, which were born Number one, not of blood. Number two, nor the will of the flesh. Number three, nor the will of man. The fourth one's different, but of God. You were born of God. God literally, check this out now. This is not some metaphor that we're describing. It literally means what it says. This body is the tomb that... My old self dies in. It is where the new man resides. The inner man. I uh, have a book that I started looking at today. I bought it at Goodwill a while back. It was written by Eckhart Tolle. He is one of the people that has influenced Rick Warren. Eckhart Tolle is a new ager to the core. And this book is called Silence Speaks, which is really stupid. Because if I were to say, what did I say? No. I didn't say nothing. But he said... In this, and I just started going through it and making notes. It says in there 
that residing in every man, every human, every being, is this inner silence that we must tune out all of the words of this world. Did you get what I just said? Tune out the words so you can hear the silence. Simon and Garfunkel sang about that, didn't they? It is the sound of silence. And he said, once you get into and are listening to the silence, you are listening to the I am on the inside of you. The Christ who is also the Buddha. Yeah, I don't think so either. Okay? But that's the kind of stuff that's moved in to churches through Rick Warren and other people. They may not, people may not recognize it. Most people probably don't even care. But that's, that's what's there. So anyway, he gave us power to become the sons of God. How? We were born. We were conceived. Literally, because that new man is inside of us. It is the son of God. Okay? Now, uh, verse 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of his, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. What does it mean to be sons of God? Turn to Psalm 82, verse 6. And, buddy, I got in trouble by a woman one time. She called our ministry in a huff. And there was an email. One of the two. It might have been an email. It's been years ago. But she said, someone told me that you said that we're going to be gods. And I quoted these scriptures. And she said, well, that's heresy. And I'm going, all I did was quote scripture. Psalm 82, 6, I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. That's what, G, that's what John 1 is telling us. We are sons of God. He is our Father, not the Father of our first birth, father of our second birth, okay? Jerusalem is our mother. I have said ye are gods. All of you are children of the Most High. Now Jesus quoted this verse in John chapter 10. Turn there. So let me say it a different way, and I'll, but it'll still end up being the same thing. When... Jesus said, you know, they brought him to the story about the, the man who married a wife but couldn't raise up no children, and he died. So the man's brother had to take the wife to raise up seed, and he went through seven brothers, and none of the seven brothers were able to conceive through this woman. In heaven, whose wife is she going to be? And Jesus said, you do err, not knowing the scripture nor the power of God. For ye shall be as what? In the resurrection ye shall be as the angels who neither marry nor are given in marriage. Okay, the angels of heaven, that's right. So, when we're resurrected, we're going to be given those perfect spiritual world bodies as sons of God, as Children of the Most High. Can angels fly seamlessly without being affected by wind or rain or storms? Do angels ever die? No. Okay. Can angels walk through walls? Yes. And every sense of that, because of the spiritual nature of which they were made, God said they are gods. Look at John 10, verse 33. The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Notice the capital G. And was Jesus right? 
he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Verse 34, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If he called them gods, unto whom what happened? The word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified he, and sent into the world, Thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. Remember what we said about the son of a duck? The son of a duck is a duck. The Son of God is God. We as his creation, being made a little lower than the angels, but in the resurrection, we are going to be given those perfect bodies, sanctified bodies, hallowed bodies, bodies that won't hunger, bodies that won't be limited by this three-dimensional gravity-forced world. None of those things affect us. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Jesus being in the fiery furnace, the Son of God in the fiery furnace, they were not, they had not been burned, they had not been singed, they did not smell like smoke, nothing, nothing happened to them because Jesus is the Son of God and he had that perfect body. So, um, verse 37, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not, but if I do... Though thou believe, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. So what I'm basically saying is, is that we will be perfected in every way. Completely perfected in every way. We will be immortal. We will be incorruptible because the genetics that we were made by is incorruptible. It's called the incorruptible, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That's my point in this. Now, two types of gods. Bad ones, good ones. Ain't, it's like angels, two types of angels. Bad ones, good ones. All of the angelic realm are referred to as, in the book of Job, as what? The sons of God. Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2, Job chapter 38. When the morning stars sang out and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so, and I always have to be careful with this because some people might misunderstand but in essence, Jesus said of us unto whom the word of God has come and caused us to be born again, ye are gods. Little g. Not the big g one. Amen? There's only one of those. Um, Romans 8, turn there. Verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Remember, Jesus is our brother. He is the firstborn among many brethren. He is not ashamed to be called or to call us brethren. So we have been made partakers of the divine nature. We had the old nature, the old sin nature. Now that we are born again, we have the divine nature because we are led by the Spirit of God. Um, Jesus put it back there in that verse we just read, to whom the word of God came. They are children of the Most High. So, uh, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. That's the Mount Sinai covenant but you have received the spirit of adoption. That's the difference right there. Adoption. 
whereby we cry, Abba. What is Abba? It's the Hebrew word for Dada. Dada. Right? Babies forming their first words don't say uh, Susquehanna Hat Company. They don't say that. They don't say anti disestablishmentarianism. They say Abba, Dada, Mama. First words, easy words. That's what Abba is. We are his little children. And though we can't say much, we know who our Abba is. Amen? Uh, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children... Now he's going to bring it into it, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So Christ is the receiver of all that the Father has. Heaven, earth, the heavens themselves, Jupiter and Mars, everything we are going to inherit and receive with him. Why? Because of our birth. And nowadays, is there a test to determine if a child really does belong to a man? A paternity test. Looking for the genetic code, which is this book. Amen? We can tell. You turn on some YouTube video, and somebody recommends it. Oh, man, you got to watch this. They're really on top of things, and they give scripture. And you start listening to it on YouTube, and all of a sudden you don't hear the word hath, thee, thine, thou. You don't hear those words, and you're going, that's not the Bible. That's not my shepherd's voice. Click. I don't listen to that. Amen? Amen? I wouldn't, I wouldn't listen. And, and I've had people say, now they don't use King James, but sometimes I'll listen to it, but generally I'll tell you this. If they use other translations of the Bible to get where they're going, they went to the wrong, they're going to the wrong place. Okay? Anyway, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. What does that mean? It means that we have been given the title son of God. We don't have the appearance of it yet. It's like the baby's in the womb. Okay? The baby's in the womb. We know then, let's say, that Paige was pregnant again. And Paige is carrying around a baby. You don't have to ask Paige, Paige, is that baby yours? Right? Paige, is that baby yours? Of course it's hers. It's in her. Okay? That baby is hers. We don't know what it's going to look like yet, but we know it's their child. So, the manifestation of the sons of God. Verse 20, for the creature was made subject to vanity. That means the things of this world. This is why you lose your car keys. This is why you back your car into something you didn't mean to. This is why you get sick. This is why bad things happen. This is why we get old. This is why we lose our hair. This is why all sorts of bad things happen. 
but by reason of whom who has subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The bottom line is, are you willing, are you really willing to wait out your life to receive your inheritance, or are you the prodigal son or Esau who wants it now? And that's the choice that people make. Very plain choice. They don't want religion. They don't want heaven. What good does heaven do me now? I want it. I want my best life now. By the way, you're going to see me show this before too long. A full minute and a half commercial, or maybe two minutes, Joel Osteen's Daily Inspiration Talking Calendar. Now, I'm not making this up. It's being telemarketed. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. But people all over the world are buying these. It's a gimmick is what it is. It's a sales gimmick. But they're getting these little calendar clocks that every day... When you wake up, or it'll wake you up with some new inspirational word of truth from Joel Osteen himself. And I'm going, he's just replaced Jesus. And he's getting rich off of it. Mm, mm, mm. creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. We are sons of God, children of God, daughters of God. Philippians 2.13, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Remember what the angels are? They're stars. That's what that means. We're going to be as the stars of heaven for multitude, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. 1 John 3, here it is. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, and here it is. Now, right now, are we the sons of God? Right now, we are. We are in title. We are in conception. But, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. We don't know what body it's going to look like. Just like a child in the womb. We don't know. Even with ultrasound, as good as it is, we still don't know what that child's going to look like. However, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You remember how I said the other day, brothers look alike? What are we going to look alike? Jesus. The whole world is then going to know that we literally are the brothers of Jesus, the sons of God, because we are going to look like him. Whew. And I imagine there's some people in this world right now who call themselves Christians who when they are manifested will not look like him you know why they are of their father the devil they won't look like him amen um let me read some prayer requests I pray for uh brother sterling Everybody turn around, wave. Hi, Brother Sterling. Hi, Sweetie Pie, Gloria, Monica, everybody over there. Um, pray for my mom. Uh, I saw Courtney the other day. She is 
post-COVID, but that don't mean much. I know what it means to be post-COVID. You still got a little way to go. Uh, we're going to pray for Sister Lori, Betty Forsyth. Dee's brother has passed away. The funeral will be next week. I saw Dee today getting my hamburger, and I, I said, now I'll see you tomorrow. She said, Brother Mike, that's next week. Oh, I'm glad I asked then, because I would have gone over there today, or tomorrow, sure enough. Um, let's see here. Tyler, Annette, Mike and Karen, Rose Hinton, Linda Toomey, Sister Betty Walsh, Monica, pray for Philip. He mentioned something to me Sunday. I was very proud of him for just bringing it up, and, and uh, it was good for him to talk it out. I'm glad he did. Lauren, Holly, Mike, Roy and Bonnie's on here, Sister Pam, John Yarborough, Kevin, Tammy Dotson, uh, Melissa's mom and Katie, John's sisters, uh, Cubby and Cindy and their family, Robert and Trish, Max, Noel Marino. Hi, Noel, we love you. Donna uh, Byerly needs prayer for her health. Uh, her husband said he's, he'll be start coming now because uh, he had his job changed. He's no longer in a position where he has to work every Sunday. So he said, I'm going to be here. Amen. Uh, Pray for Christina's daughter, Abby, Max, and uh, Sherry, Gary Kelly, Donna Trulove, our country, our president, soldiers, first responders, our church, and our online church. Pray for Kenya, our outreach there. Pray that the people who hate me over there would just listen to the Bible. That's all I, all I want you to do is just, just read, your, read your Bible and tell me I'm wrong. That's all I want you to do is read your Bible. 